This episode of Fuel for the Soul is powered by ASICS. Head over to ASICS.com and sign up for a one ASICS account. It's completely free, and when you sign up, you will receive 10% off your first purchase. You'll also gain access to exclusive colorways on ASICS.com, free standard shipping, special birthday month discounts, and more. Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Featherstone Nutrition. And we're doing kind of a weird thing right now. We have a very large <laughs> studio audience. Yeah. Carl, it's Karen. A couple mannequins. <laughs> it's very, uh, we're here at ASICS in New York City. Yeah. Meatpacking. Yeah, we're going to be uh, doing a run later tonight, but we thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do a, what is this called? Live ish. Yeah. Fuel for the Soul. Fuel for the Soul. So here we are. Yeah. And today we're talking, since it's summertime and it's going to get hot and we're going to sweat a lot, we're going to talk about hydration and sodium needs and all of that and our fancy waters that we're drinking. (laughs) Our sponsor today is Cherubundi. The Bundy. Um, Thomas is holding up the sleep one. What are you holding up? The pure... 100% 100% so that's just cherry concentrate. Stan- that's the standard. But anyway, the main point of this stuff is to, one, reduce inflammation. Obviously, the melatonin one helps with sleep and then also to recover faster. So, Megan, tell us why? in the science way you know why, why does this yeah. work? Yeah. So, I mean, tart cherry juice, they've been researching for a long time, like before I even started this business. And I was like just a little little dietitian peon back in the hospital. Um, they were doing a ton of studies on tart cherry for muscle recovery because they're just crazy high in antioxidants, like much, much higher than any other type of cherry, right? It has to be the tart cherry juice. Um, and what they found is those increased levels of antioxidants in our body actually help speed up muscle recovery, specifically DOMS, the delayed onset muscle soreness. So cherry juice has been really helpful in not allowing our muscles to get so sore because they help recover faster, right? And then even without melatonin, tart cherry juice has been shown to help with sleep. So a lot of people will drink it at night. It's got carbs in it. So that helps restock glycogen stores overnight. So, you know, in my opinion, especially just this pure tart cherry concentrate it's like a food product right so it's not like a risky supplement or anything and it is potentially very beneficial for recovery it has extra carbs which you know we need so in my eyes it's just a win-win to slug some of these back when we're uh training hard yeah um okay if you guys want to get some of this deliciousness you can go to cherubundi.com and then use the code fuel f-u-e-l at checkout for 20 percent off okay the next Sponsor we have to talk about real quick before the listener questions is Runway, R-N-W-Y. Another one of our favorite supp- supplements, right? It's collagen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Runway, I know it hasn't been out long. We've talked about it a few times. A lot of you guys have tried it. It's a collagen supplement that has some other things in, in it as well to help just with our daily health. Um, and they reformulated it because they were getting feedback if we're taking it before a run don't we need more electrolytes before a run? So they amped up the electrolytes in it. So it used to have 157 milligrams of sodium, and now it has 375 milligrams of sodium. So I love this, right? As we're heading into the summer months, where, you know, research shows if we take that 10 grams of collagen, like 45 minutes before our run, that's when we're going to get the best benefits to our tendons and our ligaments and helping rebuild cartilage and all these things. Um, So now it also has more sodium in it. So a lot of people are like, how am I going to get my electrolytes and my coffee and my collagen? Like, that's too much fluid. I'm going to be peeing my pants. So now we've got the sodium with the collagen in one. Um, So that's super helpful. So if you guys want to purchase some of the runway collagen, you can go to rnwy.life and use the code FEATHERS15 for 15% off your purchase. So yeah. And you just got a new resource on your website. So tell us about that first. So we've done uh, all things summer hydration. I think this might be our third episode. So some of you who've been along with us for the entire ride of Fuel for the Soul perhaps have heard about the importance of staying hydrated while we're running in the summer. We might have done a full summer tour last year all talking about hydration. We did. But it's that time of year again. It's hot. 
and we are sweating a lot and all these same questions and more are coming back up. So we're tackling If someone didn't want to listen to this whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. What would be, we would just tell them to drink stuff with electrolytes in it. <laughs> what are you encouraging people to like tune out right now instead of staying around no, I'm saying, to learn a little I'm more? Saying, uh, you could possibly, but why is it, why do we continue to come back to this subject? So I think, and you know, as Meg said, the new resource page on featherstonenutrition.com is um, all about sodium. So we know that we need to hydrate more when we're sweating more, but everyone seems very confused about the sodium piece because I think we're brought up in a you know world that's like salt is bad, sodium's bad, we should eat less of it, you know, we worry about our blood pressure if we take in too much. But if we're running and we're losing a ton of salt, we have to replace that somehow. So the resource page kind of allows you to identify what type of sweater you are, if you will. So do you barely glisten? Are you Cardigan. drenched? A who? Cardigan. Cardigan. Sweater. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <but I'm bummed. laughs> so Megan, you I, I think I don't know. Can we talk about somebody reaching out to you recently that's kind of well known that like burns for sodium or is that client privilege? <laughs> I'm not sure we can mention the person's name. All right. Yeah. Can you just yeah. say, OK, if, if you're working out in the summer, you're running, you're lifting, you're doing all that stuff, you know, you just do it for the joy of it mm -hmm. and you're sweating a lot is like I look at something like Element that we take that has a thousand milligrams and mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a ton. Yeah. But you're telling me there's people that are burning while they're exercising 4,000? Yeah. So, I mean, taking a step back, if we get on the scale before and after a run, it's going to tell us how much fluid we've lost, which is our sweat rate. So that's like how much actual fluid we're losing. So most people are going to lose like a liter of sweat an hour, which would be like two pounds on the scale. And per liter of sweat, most people lose about 900 milligrams of sodium. That's like the average. So if you think about it, if we're out there for an hour run, most of us are probably losing like 32 ounces of fluid and about a thousand milligrams of sodium in an hour. That sounds so high. It, right. But that's like the average. So when we see people who are soaked and crazy sweaty and salt lines all over them. Squeezing their shirts out on Instagram. Mm -hmm, those people could per potentially be losing up to three or four liters an hour. And then salty sweaters lose more like 1800 milligrams of sodium per liter of sweat. So there are some people that I've had tested for their sweat composition that are losing like 4,000 milligrams of sodium an hour. I mean, that's crazy. So, so remind me, why is that so detrimental when you're running in the summer heat? Like what's going on yeah. when you're losing? Obviously losing the sweat makes sense because that's like it correlates right to water. But when we mm -hmm. start talking about electrolytes, why is that like going to send people into like a bad place. So in order for our bodies to cool themselves, we sweat, right? But the more sodium we lose and the more fluid we lose, the more the higher our core body temperature goes, which then starts to decrease our performance, increase our risk of heat illness. So people who are heavy, salty sweaters are more at risk for like heat stroke or heat illness or side effects that come with that that could be GI issues, muscle cramping, dizziness, obviously un inability to hold paces, you know, when we're running. So it's not just like getting to a place and sort of bonking. There's right. symptoms that yeah. like are happening. So like yeah. if I'm trying to self-diagnose myself into like how much sodium I need, I know you have a tool on your site now mm -hmm. that I can use, but is there certain like indicators that maybe I need to go check out that calculator? Yeah. So I think if you're a heavy sweater or like some people, I don't know about you guys, but like I'm like soaked in sweat and I like yeah. take off the soaked clothes, hop in the shower. So you never actually see the salt streaks unless it dries. So thinking about like, does it, does our sweat taste salty when it's in our mouth? Does it sting when it goes in our eyes? Like those would be cues that you're salty, even if you're not seeing the salt on you. And sometimes your baseball hat, like oh, for yeah, me, yeah, I don't yeah. you, you guys both wear hats, yeah. make wears hats oh, yeah. all the time. You get them and they're just crusty. Yeah, right. Like I'll throw it on the counter and come yeah. back down and it's, it's like got a white yeah. ring on the top. Yeah. That's salt. Yeah. Okay. Should we answer our first question here? I think we should. We have so many. Okay. <laughs> this one is from Julie. She said, hello, Megan and Megan. I have a question about sodium intake during a marathon race. I'm not a big fan of electrolyte drinks during my run. So trying to find other ways, salt tabs and sodium from gels to get adequate sodium in during the race. Is there a range of sodium intake I should be aiming for? I know it varies a lot depending on the weather, sweat rate, running duration, et cetera, but still wanted to ask if there are some numbers I can start with. 
I'm going to run my first marathon in December in Arizona, so it should be good weather here, hopefully. But also, I'm a dietitian working in the NICU, yay, so I can work with all the numbers, <laughs> really like this show, and I'm inspired by your run and knowledge. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Julie. Um, but also, I think it is helpful to have some numbers, yeah. because to her, to answer part of her question, we can get sodium from drinks, we can get it from pills or chews, we can get it from our gels, you know, we need to kind of understand like how much we should be even starting with so that we can kind of dabble with what products do we want, how should we combine them to give people some confidence. So that's what the sodium calculator will do. It'll tell you where to start, like how much sodium per hour should we even be trying to get based on kind of what bucket we land in as far as like how sweaty we are. So for somebody who's not super sweaty, like 200 milligrams of sodium an hour is probably fine. But then people who are like heavier sweaters probably need 600, 800, maybe even a thousand. So we just kind of scale it up. But you know, to Thomas's point, like we, we try and we see how it feels and we play with it and we change it if we need to. Can you front load? Like, yeah. I know that we always talk about the night before doing a, yeah. a high salt or high mm -hmm. sodium beverage. How much does that, like, if I do that, can I just drink plain water for the next run, depending on how far I'm going? Like, you know, I think when there are, there was a research study that came out that was like, sodium doesn't improve performance. And I randomly have people that send that to me and they're like, wait, why are you telling us to take sodium while we're running if it doesn't improve performance? And I think those studies are very, very small. There's like eight people in these studies and we've seen, I mean, the three of us go for a run and we're all very different sweaters. Like if we were in a study together, something that helped Meg with muscle cramps might not touch me, you know? So it's like, we're not taking into account individual differences. And then we're just saying like, oh, it doesn't impact performance but then the other piece is we're not just taking the sodium for performance we're taking it so that we can recover faster so we don't get too far in the hole so instead of just taking water out there for two hours even if you did take some sodium ahead of time I would recommend making sure that we have sodium while we're out there so that we don't have to recoup as much when we get home right because it's like back-to-back -back days we're sweating if we get too far in a hole from a dehydration standpoint, it's harder to climb out of that so it delays recovery I haven't checked out the website yet to see the calculator but if I go there, does it also have recommendations of what my options are to use while I'm running? So not necessarily, just because I think there's so many different products out there that people can use. Um, but, you know, I think I really want to encourage people to have that knowledge and education that they can kind of decipher for themselves. Like, yeah, two LMNTs are perfect for me or a serving of scratch is perfect for me, you know? So giving people confidence of what they're choosing and, you know, realizing that that's what my body needs um, versus like saying, hey, take this specific product because there's so much on the market right now. Yeah. Like every time I, you know, talk to somebody, there's a new sodium product. Yeah. It's, it's pretty hot right now. I just think <laughs> it's a, uh, it comes down to reading i guess the label and seeing right. what the what the percentage of electrolytes are and and what you're getting into your system exactly yeah so we've when we've talked about like carb needs and protein needs for athletes in general it's usually based on size or gender or age does that have any play for sodium or is it strictly just your sweat rate it's it, it <laughs> as larger human is probably going to sweat more. So like there might be a little bit of a correlation, right? Like when I, to be completely transparent, the people that I've seen that are the heaviest, saltiest sweaters are usually my larger male runners. Like we have more surface area. It takes more to cool our body, but I have had a very teeny tiny petite female that lost, I mean, her losses were astronomical. So it doesn't necessarily correlate to body size, but I have seen like some trends along those lines. Um, but it's genetic, right? Like how much we sweat is genetic. I know we've talked about this before. Like my son, I call him my sweat hog. He sweats <laughs> like I do. My daughter doesn't, you know? So yeah. it's like my grandma used to sweat like crazy. I'm like, I sweat like grandma Smith did, you know? So we can probably, you know, it's genetic. We can't change it. You know, we can't like make ourselves, you know, sweat less. It is what it is. Okay. So I'm curious because I see you after runs all the time. Mate. Yeah. What do you, what would you consider yourself on the sweat scale, a heavy sweater or average i'm definitely a heavy sweater and i've done the so there's a level in test yeah. that's the sodium test to figure out how much sodium you lose in an hour and i think i was 1600 milligrams yeah. you which were is high, high. Right? yeah 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 which is so which is why it was so important for me to start taking in sodium for performance in a right. marathon and you brought up the there's tests that say sodium doesn't improve performance but like i think that was the key to you yeah. To starting being consistent, breaking three hours was getting the right hydration in. Before that, 
I mean, do, can you talk about like what was happening yeah, to you on the run? We've talked about that on here before. It's I would just get muscle cramps in the later stage of a marathon and it was probably lack of nutrition and hydration mm-hmm. and specifically sodium too. Yeah. And that's why, I, and you're not the only one that I've seen this with. Like when we tinker with hydration, when we increase sodium, they have better performance. They're recovering faster. They're bouncing back. They're getting fitter. So when I hear people like, well, the research says, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, yes, research is great. But at the same time, when there's variability amongst people's sweat and sodium losses like this, it's almost impossible to capture that in a study. I've been doing this for years. And when I see like sodium is a make or break for a lot of people in their performance, like, I'm, you know, you got to go with that clinical experience too, yeah. not just what this one research says. And I know you, you keep saying the level and test, mm-hmm. and I know we've talked about it in the past, but if people wanted to get a test, what it, how do they take this test? Yeah, so I guess that was actually somebody's question here too, like how do I find out my sweat composition? So taking a step back, if somebody's kind of new to this whole concept, we can do sweat rate, which is how much fluid we lose an hour, which there's a calculator on my website for that too. It's super easy. You just weigh in and out around a run to try to get understand, okay, in 50 degrees, I don't sweat much, 60, I sweat more, 70, so that you can figure out how much do I need to drink around it. But that's just total fluid if we want to get to like the nitty gritty here of like how much sodium are we actually losing per liter of sweat, that's where you'd have to do a sweat composition test. Like the level in patch, it's a company out of, um, Pennsylvania that literally, I mean, you did it. I did it. They send you like a gauze pad and you tape it to your forearm and it collects your sweat and you send it back and they spin it down and analyze your sweat composition. And then there's also, um, precision hydration people have probably mm-hmm. heard they started making gels and electrolyte stuff so people might have heard of their products but they also have a sweat test but you have to go to that person's office and you so you'd have to get on their website and see if there's like a location near you and that one you don't actually have to run they literally like put electrodes on your arm oh. and like stimulate you to sweat and then you would go home and do the sweat rate and then they'd help you know help you figure out what you need so those are probably the two easiest ways to get sweat sweat composition tests done they're the most accurate um but then there's also the gadgets that we played with yeah, last summer H drop in h drop yeah. so there's some at-home gadgets they're how just not accurate quite as, were they they're just not quite as accurate yeah and those yeah. are those are meant for almost real time like to yeah. let you know hey you should yeah. be taking in this amount of fluids right but and i have had some athletes that have played with those and with varying degrees of success. Like the H drop I thought was very comparable to Levelin when I used it. The Nix I was not comparable to me, but I have had other people that the Nix was comparable to their Levelin. So I don't know. Like if you want like really accurate information, yeah. I think you should do precision or Levelin. If you want to play with some reusable device at home, the Nix or the H drop would be the options. So you can while you're running, you're saying that's like live reporting. Mm-hmm. It goes to Those an app. Were, yeah. Um, with nutrition, we've talked about bonking that you reach a certain point and you can't recover. Is that the same with sodium? Yeah, sodium and hydration. So there, the older research studies used to say if we lose 2% of our body weight in fluid, our performance starts to tank. But they've done more research where they've looked at like elite runners and some of them can tolerate up to like a 7% dehydration in their winning marathons, you know, so it kind of seems to be a little bit individualized as far as how much we can lose. But you're right, when we get to a certain point of dehydration, I mean, a little bit of sodium might help us not cramp or a little hydration might make us feel better. But we're almost past the point of return, right? Like we can't absorb more than about 24 ounces of fluid an hour when we're running. And think about that. Like, I'm not even sure I could get that much down at like race pace. Like yeah. that's a decent amount of fluid. Well, I, I always think about here we are at A6. Yeah. And one of the athletes that we know is like one of the top performers is Emma Bates. And, and yeah. you see her at the end of the race, her ponytail is yeah. dry. Her <laughs> yeah. skin looks dry. Yeah. Like she looks. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at most of the pro athletes, not, they don't sweat a ton. Yeah. And, um, is, is that happen through training? Like they get to a certain level of fitness and their body adjusts, or is that a, no, like one of those it's things? genetic. Is, okay. I mean, so the fitter we get, the sooner we sweat. Oh, so like our time to sweat will drop as we get fitter. Cause our body's becoming more efficient at cooling our cooling ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I think it, it is just is what it, that's another reason that they're superhuman, right? Except for Clayton, uh, he's talked about how he's a heavier sweater. And if you remember seeing him at the trials, he, he was fairly sweaty, yeah. you know, and he talked about how he put his hydration bottles in like a frozen, yeah. like metal bottle so that when he got to each aid station, they weren't piping hot like everybody else's yeah. bottles were. Yeah. Like he was very strategic about his That's hydration, smart. which was cool yeah. to hear. So you'll yeah. do that for people at the marathon? <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have your bottles boxes. on ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Whatever it takes. 
Um, okay, there's a few related questions to Julie's question. Um, this one's from Megan. She said, is it okay to take an element or liquid IV every day? What about multiple? So I pulled you guys on. Um, it better be okay. It better be. <laughs> Thomas is like trembling over here. Like <laughs> that four. Going through withdrawal. Um, so by far the most popular question when I was asking you guys what your questions were about, you know, sodium and hydration was, is it possible to take too much? So we're seeing these products like Element that has a thousand milligrams of sodium in it, that um, scratch every day that is 400 milligrams a scoop that people are using two or three scoops. And Tailwind's another one. Tailwind, yeah. yeah. So um, I think it makes sense that people are like, oh shoot, is this gonna be too much? Yeah. Like I get that. We're in this culture of like, how much sodium do I actually need? So for somebody who doesn't sweat much, two elements a day might be way too much, right? Or in the winter when we're not sweating as much, that might be way too much. But for most of us, if we're a heavy sweater, if we can think like we need at least a thousand milligrams an hour of running, that's, uh, you know See, what I mean? Maybe like, I'm I not drinking enough of these. <laughs> I, I mean, I've gotten addicted to them. I, I admit like it's after a run, especially I'm like craving the uh, element. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's, it is, I also am like salting my food. We don't shy away from seasoning yeah. or anything like that. So I feel like I'm getting enough, but yeah, I'll have to take your calculator. And that, but that's a good point that we get it through our food too. So if somebody's like, I don't want to be purchasing all these electrolyte drinks. I don't, do I need these? No, you don't necessarily. I mean, yes, we need to take something out with us while we're out running. But you know, if you want to just have saltier food, like I don't know about you guys, but I always, same thing. I crave salt after runs and I'm like, oh, I guess that means I need some more salt, you know, which is true. Like, you know, if we are craving salt after a, a hot run, that's absolutely what we need. Um, so I guess to kind of, calm any concerns about the sodium piece we probably need it like we, we need significantly more sodium than we realize when we're running in the heat all right so we always talk about the different commitment levels that people have to running and when we're normally talking about nutrition and stuff on this podcast we're talking about people who are going after performance goals who are training for marathons who are doing that is there a taper off like if someone's doing less miles a week, just less salt. Yeah. And I mean, if you are concerned about it, we had some people reach out that are like, I have, um, <laughs> Carl's salting himself over here. <laughs> um, like I had some people reach out that like, I watch my blood pressure. Like I have a family history of hypertension. Like I need to be careful about salt. Like some people, sodium does increase their blood pressure. Some people it doesn't, but if you found that it does on days when you're not running, don't drink a high sodium supplement, right? Just surround your runs with more sodium. Salt your food before a longer run. Make sure you take some during and after and just kind of notice how you feel. Like a lot of this, we're not going to know like 100%. This is how much I need. I didn't get too much. I got perfect amounts. Like you just kind of have to play with it and notice. Like if you're somebody who gets headaches after runs, like Robbie does, you know, make sure you're getting enough. And when I drink this amount, my headache goes away. So we must be doing it, you know, kind of listen to your body and some of your symptoms. So one thing I think you actually posted about it this week maybe was that on rest days, you don't need to necessarily cut back on carbs yeah. and like intake of food because yeah. it's, you should be looking at it more of like a whole week of training mm -hmm. versus like, this is my rest day. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to hydration and sodium, maybe this is a point where you could yeah. step back. I agree. I think if, if we're being smart about our hydration, we need to keep well hydrated around these runs. Now, if on a rest day, you're like, holy crap, I blew it yesterday and I'm so dehydrated, then yes, let's catch up. But ideally, we'd really try to scale up sodium and fluid before runs, keep on top of it during runs and recoup after, and then just get back to our normal hydration the rest of the day it would be like the ideal scenario. Okay. Okay. This is a question from Ben. He said, what are we, <laughs> this isn't nutrition related, Ben, but we'll ask it. What are we doing to keep sweat out of our eyes? <laughs> don't you love that? I mean, you know, I don't know about you guys, but oh, when we were in the Austin stop for the ASIC yes. hydration tour last year, literally I couldn't even open my eyes. There was just so much sweat pouring and I don't think I'd ever run in that type of heat. All of you guys in Texas are just <laughs> superheroes. Um, but I mean, that's why I always have a hat or a headband on is yeah. to try to like absorb that. I don't know. What, about, how about guys? Like you guys just wear a hat? I mean, I that's what I always go yeah. with. Like a baseball cap. I yeah. mean, it serves a couple of purposes in the, in the summer, especially in the heat. Yeah. One, just keeping some of the sun off your face. Yeah. Two, I feel like with that shade, it just is yeah. a little less blazing in your, it, like it psychologically, maybe, that's I don't true. know. And yeah. then, yeah, it just soaks up yeah. sweat. Like it's the same thing you guys 
probably just do it in a sports bra. But when we take our shirts off, you'll notice your shorts get a lot sweatier. Oh, so sure. it like just transfers down. So the hat is soaking up some of the yeah. sweat. Yeah. 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 I'm, you know, I'm always wearing a hat when I'm running. <laughs> right. So it works for multiple things. Yeah. Um, okay. This is from Michelle. She said, when is the best time to hydrate with sodium on a morning? I have a long run. So kind of like what we were saying before, if you're a super heavy sweater and it's going to be hot, we can increase sodium the night before. Like our bodies are smart, right? If we increase sodium too far out from a run, we're going to get rid of the excess. But if we kind of trick our bodies within like 12 hours, if we scale up that sodium the night before, we're going to hang on to some of that extra salt and fluid so that we have that buffer, kind of like carb loading, right? We have that extra, you know, source of fluid and sodium to burn through so that our performance doesn't tank. So the night before and then the morning of, right? scale up, have some electrolytes with your coffee before your run, and then make sure that you have your goal of what you're taking during the run and then recoup the rest after. So really kind of sandwich it around those runs. And one warning is you're going to feel a little doughy, <laughs> you <laughs> know, like it is something that like getting used to that feeling of being, I mean, I don't hydrated. know. Hydrated. Yeah. I guess that's the word hydrated. Yeah. You, you, you're going to feel a little bit yeah. different, but you're going to notice it on the run. Yeah. And that was a question that kept coming up was like, why do I feel so bloated in the summer? And it's like, it's hard on our bodies to dehydrate, rehydrate, dehydrate, re you know, so as we're putting sodium and fluid, like sometimes our body's like, I don't know what to do with this. And we end up kind of feeling swollen and the summer bloat, if you will. It is what it is, right? Like don't allow that feeling to keep you from being hydrated because then you're going to tank on your runs. You're like increase your risk of injury. You're not going to get the performance. You're going to feel awful out there. So people who are like, I can't run in the heat. I feel so terrible. I'm like, you're probably dehydrated. Like, yes, it's hard. We need to be conscious and slow down but if we're well hydrated we should be able to at least endure you know hot or summer training yeah. well that's a good point the um injuries how, how do you like what are you going to see injury wise from being dehydrated besides like like yeah. tendons and calves yeah. like pulls right like anecdotally like yeah. my heavy sweaters that aren't crushing it are like pulling things like a calf strain mm -hmm. or like a quad strain or yeah I mean I've seen that very frequently or, or a couple times people who are really heavy sweaters that will cramp in a race that ends up being then like an ongoing issue in that specific muscle um and I always just have to wonder like how much of this goes back to those muscles are just being overworked you know as mm -hmm. they're under hydrated yeah Okay, this question is from Shireen. She said, does it matter if sodium comes from a gel, drink, or salt tab? Is one absorbed better or faster? No, we have so many options. <laughs> We have so many options. So it's just what works best for us. I have some people who love, they'll literally take the salt stick caps with a gel. Like just like literally oh, take ew. it all at once. No, yeah, that's you. rough riding. But then I have other people that like a really salty drink, but then there's yeah. some people who like water. So we need to be getting it from a higher sodium gel. So as long as you're getting enough sodium, whether it's from a tab, a chew, a drink, a gel, that's the important part. So you can I do think it's so it much out. harder in a race to get electrolytes in than any other thing like a gel is i think it's the convenience of the pack you just mm -hmm. put it in you get your 100 calories yeah and you keep rolling the pills like i've seen people put them in sandwich bags and like yeah. to try yeah. to keep them yeah. dry and and pull them out and then yeah. they're sticking to your finger as you're yeah. trying to get the water like is there a simpler way to do it during a yeah. race because I, f I find it's like if you're not carrying your own drink if you're not mm -hmm. the pills like, yeah. I know some of the energy gels do have electrolytes yeah. in them, but it's not quite enough. Mm -hmm. Give me a simple way to do this. Yeah. So the two ways that I did it this spring. So in Tokyo, where you can't carry a bottle, I took the salt stick fast chews because I was like, there's no way I can take a pill. So I used water on course and then I used the fast chews during and I thought that worked well. They come in like a individual like sealed top. But they're lower in they electrolytes. They are lower. So you have to take more. So I was taking like four of those to get 200 milligrams of sodium. So I was taking more of those fast chews. So four in total or four no, an hour? four an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. I was and like you got them all two down? And two I don't think I got my last two down because I remember I threw the package away and I think there was two left. Yeah. Okay. So you said per yeah. hour. So yeah. would you recommend that? Like say that you're uh, out there for four hours. You're still the same dosage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And keeping it consistent. And two. So then the other thing I did when I could carry a bottle at London was I put regular scratch in and then I put their new everyday hydration product on top of it. So I like front loaded. I think I had like a thousand milligrams of sodium in my bottle that I took in the first half of the race. Oh wow! So I got more in in the front half mm. so that I didn't 
necessarily have to care as much about it in the second half because it wasn't hot. I mean, if it was hot, I would need to repeat that again. But I knew for me personally, that would be okay if it was cooler. Yeah. So you can do that. You can front load and then sort of wing it in the back half. That's, I mean, that's, <laughs> I don't know if I should recommend this. That's been my strategy yeah. for like cooler races and okay. it's worked great for me. Because if you think about it, like the front half of your race, you can get more down. You're not worried, you know, like it's just easier to take more in. For sure. Um, and then just like go for it in the second half. Yeah. Okay. How can I add gels with electrolytes into my overall fueling plan? Also, I use an electrolyte drink. Yeah. So this has been kind of a hot topic too, because as we've talked about on here before, Morton does not have sodium in it. So a lot of people are like looking for other options. So if somebody doesn't want to carry a bottle, I know they're a heavy sweater. We need more salt. I'll try to trans like get them to choose a gel that is higher in sodium so that we don't have to rely on an electrolyte drink quite as much. Or like we've talked about here, I don't know how they're mixing the electrolyte drinks. You know what I mean? Right. Like we don't know exactly what we're getting. So if we need to be a little bit more precise about it, there are a lot of gels that are higher in sodium. So if you look at the back of your gel and look at the nutrition label, if it has 200 milligrams or close to that or more, that would be considered like a high sodium gel. So you can look at yours and kind of see. Okay. This question is from Jen. She said, should I increase sodium when I'm focused on keeping my blood pressure low? Mm -hmm. So this was a very common question as yeah. well. We need to recoup our losses. So if someone is really concerned about scaling up sodium, like I've had a couple of clients that had a history of like a heart attack or do are on medication for high blood pressure, I would recommend a sweat composition test. So you can be very confident, this is what I need, because it is important, even though we're watching sodium for our blood pressure, that we're recouping what we're losing. So, so if we're not, we're going to feel terrible when we're training. And then we are at risk of, you guys have probably all heard of hyponatremia, where we get too much water, not yeah. enough salt, which can be very dangerous. So if somebody's continuously losing a lot of salt and not taking enough in on a daily diet, you know, we're going to see that risk of hyponatremia much, much higher. Um, so we do absolutely need to replace what we're losing. But for somebody like Jen that's concerned, maybe knowing those precise sodium yeah. you know, concentrations would be helpful for her. What, um, hypo, what is it? Hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. Like your blood sodium gets too low. Got it. Yeah. What are the symptoms of that? So like the initial symptoms of it are a little bit of like dizziness or disorientation, like a little bit of confusion. Um, and then your hands to start to swell. Like a lot of my salty sweaters, if they're just drinking water, will say their hands get really, really swollen while they're running. Which um, is interesting because I would think the opposite. Like I would think if you were super salty, yeah. you would get swollen. Right. So if you eat too much salt, you also feel that way. Okay. That's what's confusing about okay. this. The symptoms of like oversalting ourselves and undersalting ourselves are very similar. similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is from Tamana. She said, best gels... I think we kind of talked about this. Yeah. The best gels of electrolytes now that I'm tossing awesome sauce out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Applegate. Um, yeah. So like, like we said, if gels have more than 200 milligrams of sodium, they're considered, you know, a higher sodium gel. So yeah. never second is a big one right now. Um, Huma plus has 245 milligrams of sodium. Whoa. So that's. What's the big, Huma plus? What's the difference between Huma and Huma just plus? Just has more sodium. That's it. The plus is okay. like more electrolytes. Yeah. Um, the Cliff liquid gels, which I tried at TRE, they weren't bad. They have 190 milligrams. What about the untap yeah. ones that I'm using? I think those I think have they're some. around like 100 milligrams. I wouldn't consider them a right. high sodium. Okay. But that would be so easy for them to add, like have like a salty untapped. Yeah. Like they could easily add more sodium and it would still taste good. And Morton has zero? It's like 30 milligrams, okay. I think. It's nothing. Yeah. 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 Don't even count them. No, not at all. Okay, this is from Mallory. She said, I sweat a ton, even more in the heat, obviously. Is it worth doing a sweat test to measure specifically how much sodium I lose? Or is it safe to assume that because I sweat a lot, I lose a lot of sodium too? And yeah. should I just go ahead and ramp up my sodium intake even more in the heat? Yeah. So Mallory, I mean, let's just ramp it up and see what happens, yeah. right? Let's throw some more salt at it and play with it. Um, personally, doing the sweat composition test, like just like kicked my butt into gear to like do what I know I needed to do. You know, like it helped me to be like, oh, hey, Megan, you just need to stay better hydrated. Like scale up your sodium. So if Mallory's willing to do that without paying for a test, like let's do it, right? Yeah. All right, but say like we talk about like the streaking on the clothes mm -hmm. and the salt <laughs> on the hats and stuff like that. If we're taking more electrolytes, mm -hmm we're going to see more of that, right? Because we're going to be bleeding out more? Not, not necessarily. Like our sweat composition is very, very, very genetic. Now they have done some tests, like if we take a ton of sodium in, that it might increase it a little bit, but it's not, like it's not okay. a crazy amount. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, this is from Christina. She said, I need help with the horrible post-workout headache. I've tried using multiple different products, but I seem to get an immediate worse headache after drinking them. I don't consider myself a super sweater, probably somewhere in the middle. What am I doing wrong and what else should I try? I wanted to throw this in here, Christina, because it kind of sounds like her headache is not hydration related yeah. then. If she's not a salty sweater, she's not a heavy sweater. When she drinks fluid, it makes it worse. I think she's like more of a tension headache. You know what I mean? Oh. Because, and I wanted to mention that because if we do have headaches from dehydration, it should pretty quickly feel better when, when we're hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a very, you know, strong correlation yeah. there. So if she's not getting that relief, my guess is her headache is like more of a tension type thing. So, um, what do you mean by tension thing? Do you ever like run and get real, like when you're doing like speed workouts, Tight. you get yeah. real tense yeah. and then you stop and you're like, oh, my back hurts. You know, that <laughs> can cause like a headache from there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem like you relate to that. You're very relaxed. In your <laughs> you know, I, maybe I'm not, I, I feel like I don't try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't try hard enough. Run faster. Yeah. I'm like this is, this is good. This is pain. This level of pain is <laughs> fine for me. <laughs> I'm going to cast her listen to this. Yeah. Um, do we have any questions in the audience here, Carl? <laughs> Can anybody sodium? Sodium? Come questions? on, let's hear them. So, I, I you brought up uh, Mac Baker, I think his name is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it sounds like to me that the guy. He's one of those people that goes out real hard for shorter distances and thinks he's good. And then when he <laughs> goes a little bit longer, that's when he starts to bonk because of not taking in the proper hydration or uh. nutrition. Yeah, what what do you say to someone who's like, I don't need the, I don't need that. I just can run on my own, and I do fine. And I'm like, how much better could you be if you did it? Like seriously, that's what I'm always. It's kind of the super shoe thing. Yeah, I, people are like, I don't. Yeah. This is not the shoe that makes it better. But yeah. you're like, eh, try it. <laughs> try it, it makes it a little yeah. nicer. I mean, honestly, I had this one guy that came to me before Boston, and he thought he was doing everything right. He was like increasing his sodium because he kept getting cramps but he, he was a phenomenal runner but he wasn't hitting his potential and he like he was like I think I'm doing enough and he was he was taking a lot of sodium but we scaled it up even more after I like asked him some questions and he came he like crushed Boston like crushed it was this like a year? minute yes in the heat oh wow I know and it's like you know he's like I think I'm doing enough like I don't think I need anything more but when you really take a look at it and personalize it a little bit more he was able to like hit goals that he didn't realize he was able to just from tweaking his hydration strategy so wow. it can make a huge difference. It really, really can. Um, and we don't have to feel awful and struggle through training. I mean, there's no eat. downside to eating that graham cracker before you go to, for a right. run. There's no downside right. to hydrating yeah. with yeah. sodium while you're running and stuff right. like that. So it's really just stubbornness, you would say? <laughs> Yeah, and habits, right? Like we're so used to doing things a certain way that sometimes it's really hard to change that right? Yeah. And like, if I can get people to change it and realize how much better they feel, how much harder they can train, how much faster they recover. I mean, I think one of the biggest things with hydration and adequate nutrition on these long runs, which is where people seem to struggle the most is like, we don't need to die on a Saturday for the rest of the day after a long run. Like we should be able to bounce right back and go grocery shopping and go to our kids games and go to a party. And yeah. you know, like we should have the energy. It shouldn't be either training for a marathon or having a social life. Yeah. Like we can do it all if we're fueling well, hydrating well, and being intentional about the timing of it all. Yeah, I think that's a huge piece of it is that I think people that go out and don't, quote, need this hydration or mm -hmm. nutrition mm -hmm. are doing these long runs and then not doing anything for the rest of the day because they can't. Right. And right. it's like you, but if you just fueled properly right. in the beginning, then you would have a full day of yeah. energy left. Right. But I will say there is something great about... <laughs> Sitting Not on that couch <laughs> after a 20 miler and just watching Netflix. <laughs> I, I remember someone might have reprimanded me because I used to always do my grocery shopping after a long run. Uh -huh. and they were like, Megan, <laughs> rest. Yeah. yeah. It's balance. It is. It is. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to cover about? Hydration or sodium? I don't think so. I think, I guess the biggest thing is like, let's not be scared of increasing our sodium when we're sweating more. Like it's just like a very direct, if we're sweating more, we need more salt. So whether that's coming from additional electrolyte drinks that you're adding in, whether we're salting our food more, a combination of both, don't be afraid to tinker with your hydration and sodium when you're training through the heat because it can make a huge, huge difference. So play with it, notice what works best for you. Like we said, there's a million high sodium products on the market right now. Find what you like best and stick with it. So if I want to use this calculator that you have on your mm -hmm. website, where do I go? It, if you go to featherstonenutrition.com, there's a resource page. That's where you would find the carb load calculator, the sweat rate calculator. So now there's the sodium calculator there too. Sounds yeah. like everything's covered. Right? 
I mean, it's really trying to take care of you guys. Yeah, so easy. <laughs> And then if someone did want to go the extra step and figure mm -hmm. out their exact sweat rate composition, all that good stuff, yeah. where should they go? Yeah. So there's a sweat rate calculator on there too, but the okay. composition piece, like I would recommend, you know, either the level in or look for a precision hydration location okay. near you, which is just on their website. Um, or like the Nix or the H drop would be the at home gadgets okay. to play with. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Do I get to say it? Yeah. Peas and carrots. Bye. Bye. <laughs>